So I've always been super interested in seeing every steak or roast that is actually cut from a beef cow. And when Porter Road and I were talking about doing a video together, I was like, hey, could you guys bring an entire half beef in and butcher it with me? And they were like, sure. So that's exactly how this video came to be. So James is the butcher and co-founder and he broke it down with me and I kind of just let him explain all the different cuts, including a bunch that I've never even heard of before. Now a quick primer up front before we get to the sections of the individual cuts. We started with a dry aged half beef that was in four quarters and the front quarter is made up of the chuck, brisket and shank. The second quarter is made up of the rib and the plate. And then that third quarter is the loin flank and finally the fourth quarter, which is the round. Now, those middle two sections don't move as much on the cow, so that's where some of those more tender cuts are from, whereas the front quarter is slow moving muscles, so there's a little bit more fat and connective tissue, and then the hind quarter are fast moving muscles, and it's generally gonna be a bit leaner, and these play a lot into how we should prepare and cook these different cuts. So this is a much longer video, so maybe grab a drink or put this in the background while you're cooking something. I learned a ton in this, so hopefully you all do too. And Porter Road will be offering 15% off any order using the link down below. Um, it's super high quality meat, no really explanation necessary as you guys will see. But let's get into the video, let's break it down, literally. All right, so we've got everything cut from our, that front quarter of it, and that was the, the chuck, the brisket, and the shank. Yep. We've tried to lay them out, kind of like that. So how about you take us through just like a couple of these different cuts, and then um, I'm also gonna ask you kind of what are some underrated cuts here? Absolutely. What are your more popular cuts? And then uh, also just any other cool information about these. All right, yeah. So we took that chuck, like you said. Uh, we broke it down piece by piece. This is a general layout of what we do um, at our facility. And this is how we try to utilize the animal in the best way. So from head over here, um, we'll start. And this is the neck. Yep. So we, we sell a neck roast, which is incredibly flavorful. It's an incredibly tough, you know? There's lots of motion. They're eating, they're chewing, they're walking around. They're looking around, enjoying the pasture. Yeah. Um, so with that, you're developing a lot of that connective tissue. You can see it in there. We leave, we leave the bone on as well. So it's an incredible braising cut. Yeah. When you take a very tough piece of meat, really that whole tray, yeah. and cook it low and slow, you are gonna break down that connective tissue. That connective tissue will turn into gelatin, and that gelatin is what makes that syrupy, delicious, yeah. wonderful yeah. sauce. The key to breaking that down is you can blast it at 500 degrees and make it to where that connective tissue will break down, yep. but you're gonna end up with these dry, stringy, muscle yeah. fibers. Because again, at 165 degrees, muscle fibers expel moisture rapidly. So we, what we wanna do is cook really low, yep. 200 to 250, to make sure we're minimizing that, that moisture loss, yeah. but we're creating it in a way. So like when we braise, we use a liquid to braise yep. it. Can't uh, go higher than 212 if it's in a liquid. Exactly, so that's the way we're gonna, we're, we're not, imparting that moisture into it, yep. we're doing exactly that. We're yep. preventing that roast from ever getting above 212 yep. degrees. Um, same thing, why, we, why I personally say wrap a brisket at 160 degrees. You're gonna start to trap that moisture mm -hmm. in there. It's gonna stay moist. So neck roast, right beyond that is the chuck roast. Chuck roast is what we've talked about in the commercial old school grocery store scents, your chuck roast would contain this, 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 this. All of those cuts. Yeah, and we've kind of broke it down into several smaller cuts. And we broke it down because we're gonna treat every single piece unique and special, and we're gonna cook it to the way that that particular muscle best works. Mm -hmm. So again, chuck roast, which is gonna be along the neckline, which is gonna be at the top of the back. It's gonna be a tougher working piece of meat. It's gonna break down. It has all of this great connective tissue, all of this great collagen in there that's gonna break down and turn into gelatin. But again, if we continue to go down that line, this same muscle is this same muscle. Yep. 
These three steaks right here are called a chuck eye steak. Those chuck eye steaks are separated from a ribeye with one knife cut. Mm -hmm. One knife cut separates out the ribeye and the chuck roast. Yeah. So what we do is we utilize these. They're gonna have a little bit more chew than your regular chuck roast, but you end up with a huge piece of that spinalis yeah. muscle, which yeah. is incredibly tender and incredibly flavorful. My business partner, Chris, loves calling this the prince of the grill. Mm. The ribeye's the king, the chuck eye is the yeah. prince. This might be one of your new favorite cuts, yeah. just yeah. like the flat iron. And again, these pieces sit on top of a chuck flap which is this broken down here. Right. So again, grocery store, you have that beautiful eye piece and then you have a giant piece of meat on the bottom. That's this piece. We broke it down, we peeled that piece off and what we did is we created the chuck flap. Through cleaning up and the process, we created a Sierra steak. Yep which is like a miniature flank steak. Yeah, you totally see that too. Like this exactly reminds me of like a frank, flank steak that you'd see. Yeah, yeah, because and the reason why it reminds you of that is because of those thick muscle yeah. fibers, which is gonna give you that chew, which this particular cut and a flank steak take really great to marination, mm -hmm. which marination, there's a few different things that we're trying to do. One, we're trying to impart flavor or we're trying to tenderize it. Yeah. If we're trying to impart flavor, we use oil, we use herbs, we use aromatics. If we're trying to tenderize it, we can use an acid which is gonna denature the proteins which actually can make it to where it's a little chewy or you can use some kind of meat tenderizer or a tropical fruit. Yep. Commercial meat tenderizer is uh, extract of papaya. It's made out of papayan. So if you use tropical fruit, you use pineapple, you use papaya, anything like that, it'll start to actually break down mm. that connective tissue and create a soft, more palatable um, piece of meat at the end. If you leave it in there too long, it turns into yeah, mush. It's a little mealy and not, not good. It's a fine yeah, balance. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, some people prefer that chew. I like a little chew to my meat. Yep. It is something we're eating, you know, like I, I need my teeth, I need to do it. And if you cut against that grain, your knife is doing half the work that your jaw yep. won't have to do. Over here, the bits and pieces on the outside of our Denver become boneless short ribs. Mm -hmm. They have that fat, they're delicious, smoked, braised. Again, tougher pieces of meat that turn into a few different muscles that we're gonna braise down. You can leave them whole, they're phenomenal, they're great. Um, so that's the top part of the animal. And then right here, we have our chain, which we took off. Yep. This is really good pounded out. You could roll it up for a roulade. You could slice it up, put it on a yakitori, or you could even make it into stir fry. Mm -hmm. Again, a tougher piece of meat, but you wanna make sure you use your knife and your culinary knowledge to right. tenderize it out. Right, right. So again, we're gonna come back over to the front board. This beautiful piece yeah, right here. My favorite. This is our brisket. This is the pectoral muscle. Comes down. This piece right here, you can see the separation. Yep. You can see the separation. You have your point and your flat. So you have two separate pieces. Both of them are unique and special in their own way, just like the rest of them. I prefer cooking them together. Mm -hmm. And then after I'm done smoking it, so I wrap it at 160 sure. degrees, I pull it at 195 to 200 degrees yep. because I still want it to slice. I don't yep. want it to shred, which is gonna be around that 205. So I wanna slice it. But what I do is I let it rest for an hour or so, and then I'll actually peel this whole point off. Yep. And I throw that point back on the grill mm. and char it. And then you create your burnt yep. ends across Get the whole the, thing. There's yeah. all this fat, crisps up, becomes crunchy, you toss it in a sweet barbecue sauce. It's amazing, yeah. delicious. So that's the brisket, again, pectoral muscle, animals walking around, animals working. So it's gonna be a tougher, chewier right. piece. We use our culinary knowledge to make sure it tenderizes out. On top of this sits our chuck plate. The chuck plate right here is that bones in there, yeah. beautiful bones, the beautiful, delicious meat right there. Um, we prefer to cut it into quarter inch strips. It becomes the Korean short ribs or the flunkin cut, um, marinated, uh, grilled up, Real high heat, delicious, amazing. Again, has a little bit of that chew. Chew, yeah. Totally worth it. Yeah. Totally yeah. worth it. Um, right on top of this, remember, we didn't saw through the whole animal because we wanted to save this little nugget right yeah, here. Yeah. And this piece is called the, the Terrace Major, or okay. the shoulder tender. Um, 
a very delicious tender cut. You don't want to overcook it. Mm -hmm. It will seize up. You can see the big muscle yeah. fibers, but as long as you keep it nice and rare and you slice against the grain, phenomenal cut of meat. This one's a secret. We won't talk about it yet. Undisclosed. Check us out in January. <laughs> um, this, this piece right here, um, this is our clod. Yeah. Clod heart, we cleaned it up. It is a very great um, pot roast, sliceable pot roast. Yeah. Um, you can take it, it's, it's very um, one solid muscle. There is a piece of silver through it, but you can slice it up, you braise it up. It, it's a tough enough working muscle and has enough connective tissue and marbling that'll withstand a long, slow cook. You can cut these into steaks, they're called ranch steaks. Ranch steaks are really only good if you sous vide them or mm -hmm. you tenderize them. Yeah, yeah. Um, as we continue to go down, we break down this piece right here. This is the bottom side of that scapula, that paddle bone. Right. This is the top side of it. Yep. This is the bottom side. You had two pieces. We took off our mock tender, which is not tender. Yeah. It's a little, lot. little misnomer there. <laughs> um, it does, you can, again, you can slice it into steaks, you can tenderize it, you can use it for chicken fried steak. It is, a, again, a really good sliceable pot roast. Mm -hmm. It can dry out. We mainly use it for ground beef. Um, this one right here, Ethan favorite. Yeah, we have a whole video coming on this one. <laughs> My favorite, the flat iron. So this cut right here is one of the most tender cuts in the animal. Again, we'll get deeper into it. It's tender, it's delicious, and it holds up. It is a very forgivable steak. So if you have that family member that likes dry meat, this is the best option for mm -hmm. them. And then we go back down. I was just messing around. Uh, we cut a little volcano shank right here. And with the shank, you can see all of this connective tissue right. and the marrow in there. Yep. And as you braise that down, it becomes super gelatinous, super flavorful, and incredibly healthy yeah. for you as and well. And that's one that, if you wanted to, you could have sliced through the bone and made them kind of like beef also buco. Exactly, yeah. So that's the, our, our mock asabuco. Yeah. Uh, we don't sell veal, so that's what we mm -hmm. cut as our asabuco. It cooks up the same way. Um, Asabuco is an incredible cut that has all of those different muscles, all of yeah. that connective tissue, and then that bone with the marrow in the middle, which if you braise it correctly, when you pull it out, it still holds together, but it's tender enough. Yep. And then you have that little piece of marrow in the middle, spreading on some toast, really delicious yeah. stuff. And that's your chuck. Yeah, I yeah. love it. I mean, so we've got the whole breakdown of this front half. Now we have three more sections to go. So the, I think the, it's, this was the hard one. one. Yeah, there was definitely a <laughs> lot of pieces. It was amazing just like watching you break down everything and like seeing the cuts come to life. So uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to see like the next three, the three sections we have. Let's get it done. Let's do it. Okay, so we've worked through the first part of like the main rib section. So, and we're kind of split into like the top half and the bottom half of the ribs. Yep. Uh, so this is the rib primer. Um, one of the four sections that we saw earlier, the rib section is going to be rib six through 12. Mm -hmm. That's the way we block out the beef. Count the first five ribs, that's the chuck. Second seven, that's our rib section. We make three saw cuts. We separate our rib from our plate from our navel. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we try to use every single piece and utilize it in a, its own special, unique sure, way, sure. like we always talk yeah. about. Um, the top part, the ribeye section, the rib roast section is the most common that you'll see. That's yeah. the ribeye. You can see this beautiful piece right here. Yeah. Like that's some insane marbling. It's insane, yeah. yeah. Um, our farmers that we work with have a ton of passion, ton of care, and it shows in the quality of their yeah. product. We take that, we try age it. I mean, you can smell it. Every yeah, time we make yeah. a cut, we're like, oh man. <laughs> um, so the ribeye section, um, again, you have your seven ribs. You're gonna have two very different sections though, because this is the loin end. Mm -hmm. So again, one cut separates out a ribeye and a strip. Yeah. Just one single cut. Yeah. So we tend to call these ones the stribeye because yeah. it kind of looks like a ribeye, kind of looks like a strip. But that's because it's that one single cut. As you come up farther along the line, we start to look more like those chuck eyes we've seen right, in the past, right. where your eye gets smaller in that spinalis muscle. 
starts to become more prominent and bigger, the eye gets littler and littler. They're different. One's not better than the other. They're just different. They're unique in their own special way. Um, this section right here, if we were to remove these, these would be our back ribs. So you mm -hmm. see those a lot with barbecue. Um, if you leave it on, that's your bone-in ribeye section. This is where your holiday rib roasts come yeah. from. So again, you have two different sides. You have your loin side and your, your chuck side. The chuck side, if you leave this plate on, mm -hmm. and you leave it like that, yep. that's where you start to see your tomahawks. Yeah, the one you get pulled up. <laughs> yep. So you can French those out in your tomahawks. We cut our tomahawks from the rib side, or the, the chuck side, so that way you get a bigger and a longer straight bone. Yep. These bones down towards the loin start to curve a little more. Um, so if we are gonna cut those, they'll generally be bone and ribeyes. Or if you leave a little bit of that out and French that, you can create cowboy steak. Mm. It's just that little bit of French along that loin end. Um, but again, you can bone it out. You can even go farther and you can bone this out and separate it out into pieces. You can take your eye and your spinalis and separate it out. Um, that's when you have really big beef really big body yeah. and your ribeye would be the size of a platter yeah we tend to try not to do that um, and work with our farmers to make sure the sizes are more uniform and we'll just cut them down that yeah. way um, off of this we remove the top and then we get something called a blade steak the blade steak is um, it a tougher piece of meat but it has so much incredible flavor mm -hmm. it's really great braised down stewed down chopped up into stew meat or I love sous vide it, and then quick sear it. Yeah. You break down that connective tissue, but you end up with all that flavor, and it has a great chew and bite to it. Again, you can see the big yeah. muscle fibers. They're bound tightly together, which means they're gonna be a little bit chewy. Yep. Right here, this is our dino plate. So all of these short ribs right here come off of that plate. Yep. The way we cut it and separate it, we take those first three bones, Cut it out, and then you get this nice big smoking piece of meat. Nice layers of big hunks of fat, big yeah. hunks of uh, meat, which smoke down, and then you can cut them into the three bones. Very impressive. Yeah, yeah, Very yeah. Good. The, the Flintstone like exactly. meat bones. Yeah, um, they cook up great. Again, lots of fat, lots of connective tissue. Do need to be careful; these ones will seize up, so they they cook down a little more than yep. the average thing. Um, this we take out and then we retail the rest of the plate in a different way. Mm -hmm. You can cut it all into English short ribs, which is a two inch, three bone section. Yep. Again, short ribs are fatty. So you have your fat, you have your meat layer. So you can cut the whole plate into these. We also retail Texas short ribs, a five inch meaty. These we do for smoking. Yeah. Uh, they're nice single serving deal. Again, you can retail the plate however you see fit. Um, we generally don't cut dino ribs during the winter because mm -hmm. we need as many English short ribs yeah, as we can. Yeah. Everybody's crazy. Yeah, everyone likes the red wine short ribs. Yep. So at the bottom of that, on the navel, on the outside, you saw those two skirts. So you have an inside skirt and an outside skirt. Yeah. Both of them are part of the diaphragm, both of them are part of the breathing. So they're constantly working. So again, they're gonna develop tons of flavor but they're gonna become chewy. You're gonna have a bite to it. So it's absolutely important that we're marinating these or cooking them the right yep. way. And then also absolutely making sure, which you have talked about in your yep. videos in the past, making sure we don't go the easy way and slice down there. We yep. cut it and slice against the grain. Do your jaw a favor, yep. use your knife and yep. your culinary skills for good. Um, we actually leave a lot of this fat on here. Mm -hmm. We encourage you to leave it on there. It starts to crisp up, helps keep it moist, flavorful, yep. delicious. More of that juicy mouthfeel from the fat. Oh yeah. And then we end up with a little uh, stir fry at the end. Um, so we take the little bits, slice it thin. It's incredible, it's delicious, and we do the hard work for you. Yep. And it's about that whole animal utilization again. And finally, last but not least, we have this beautiful piece of meat down here that we take and we dry cure, and then we will smoke over cherry wood and create beef bacon out mm -hmm. of it. It is phenomenal, it is amazing. I love pork bacon, I love pork, yep. but it is a good alternative, and if you're not a pork eater, it gives you the ability to have that same flavor profile, that same bite, that same eat as you would. 
You can actually pull out different muscles out of this piece too and create different kinds of steaks, but we find best that it works best for bacon. You could also slice it into boneless short ribs that are a little fatter. Gotcha, gotcha. That's the rib. Yeah, I mean, that's super interesting. I think this piece for me is just like, yeah, like beef bacon I've like never really heard of. And then, I mean, yeah, just seeing like, it literally looks like, you know, pork bacon would. So like you totally see the parallels there. I think it's really interesting. But yeah, I mean like the rib, I feel like it was probably a little bit easier than the, uh, <laughs> than, the than the chuck and the, the brisket and the pork shake. So I guess we're just coming down the animal now for the next section, yep. which we're gonna get into our New York strips and just some more rib sections. So keep so, going down. Yeah, yeah, we're done with the fore quarter onto the hind quarter. Yep. All right, so we've got section three of four. Yep. So let's uh, let's walk through it. Okay, so this is the loin section. This is that 12th rib yep. all the way down to the hip. Um, we cut it in our facility a little differently so that way we can pull back and save some of these beautiful yep. cuts over here. But again, starting at the chuck all the way at the neck, same muscle that comes all the way down that hits here into here. This particular muscle right here is our strip section. Yep. This is where you're gonna get your New York strips. Beautiful cut one right here, nice thick piece. Um, this is our strip eye section again, cut by one single slice that separates it out. As you go down into here, you'll end up with the, the, the sirloin end where you start to get a little bit of that vein in there. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. There's no difference of it. It does have a little piece of very fine silver into it. Not the worst thing in the world. Um, again, that's why people prefer the center cut not much different in eating or mm -hmm. flavor across the board, especially when you have a beef that's marbled like that and dry aged. Yeah, it's and gonna delicious. be good no matter what, pretty much. <laughs> exactly. Um, so that was that piece there. And then on the inside, we took off that giant hunk of kidney fat yeah. that you would, that suet that you render down, it becomes tallow, you fry your french fries in it and everyone will love you. Yeah. Um, once we cleared that out, we came in and got this tenderloin. Tenderloin right here, this is the most tender muscle in the animal. You can see the super fine muscle fibers yeah. and they are very easily, and I'm gonna do this. Yeah. Just, I just stuck my finger right yeah. through it. Couldn't do that with like really any other cut. No, and I did it with the tail yeah. because I'm not gonna ruin the whole thing. But I wanted to show you how yeah. extremely tender it is. And that's why you have to be a little careful and dainty when you're pulling it out. Yeah. Because you can just rip it apart. Yeah. So this is the tenderloin. Again, we have the three pieces. You have the head, the center cut, or the Chateaubriand, and then the tail. Um, we'll tie it up, whole thing, roast it, or cut it into steaks, take the tips. Uh, tenderloin tips are delicious. Again, little bit of mushrooms, tenderloin yep. tips, demi-gloss, amazing, wonderful. Um, and then as we go down on that same piece, we took off the flank steak section. Yep which is we peeled this part back, which this sat on top of this, mm -hmm. just like this. Yep. As we cleared it up, we ended up with our delicious flank steak, thicker muscle fibers, yeah. goes really well with marinade, does need a little help. You want to keep it nice and rare and you want to slice against the grain. Otherwise, you're going to be paying for it by chewing too much. Again, super beefy, super flavorful cut, but it needs to be taken care of yep. in the right way. This is a, uh, the, the extension of the skirt steak that goes into it. It's another delicious skirt steak. We slice it into fajita meat. You can also just leave it as the skirt as well. This cut right here is amazing. So here in the States, it is known as the sirloin um, flap. We sell it as the bavette, which okay, is the French yeah. name for it. Um, it's a little prettier, sells a little more, and that's what you usually see in the cookbooks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so we, we cut it into steaks, or we also sell it completely whole. See the really thick muscle fibers? Yeah, yeah. Um, you can also see this at a grocery store. They'll call it like a large skirt, mm. because people don't know what the hell a yeah, well, is. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It looks <laughs> very much like a skirt. Yep, and it's very thick, so yep. you have about an inch and a half, which is a lot better than your skirt you're gonna yeah. get. It's really thick, really delicious, and really well marbled. And it's exposed as we dry age it more mm -hmm. than these cuts that are kind of hidden. So you get a little bit more of that beefiness, that dry age sure, flavor as sure. well. 
Um, going back over to here along the backbone. So this is this is the back tail yeah, right where here. Where that H-bone was. Where right? that H-bone yeah. is, yep. And this is one of the ways that you can tell that a beef is ready to be harvested. You look at its brisket and make sure it's full and yeah. floppy. And then you also look at the back you want a nice, even back, and you don't want to see that H-bone. Yep. If you can see that H-bone sticking up, like think of like a dairy cow or something, yeah. where you can just see those right, bones right. poking up. For a beef, you want to make sure that back is flat, and you can't see those bones. Yep. So that way you know you have this nice, beautiful... Full piece of meat, yeah. Yep. So we took that H-bone. There was a bunch of craziness going on. Um, we... we took it apart, we deboned it, and we ended up with the top sirloin and the sirloin cap, also known as the pecana. Mm -hmm. So this is when, you, when you're driving down the highway and you see that piece of meat with a sword sticking yeah. into it. That's the one. That's this cut <laughs> right here. It is amazing, it is phenomenal, but again, it can be chewy. Um, yeah. But you wanna make sure it's high heat, taken care of, sliced against the grain. Delicious, wonderful stuff. Um, the top sirloin, is one of those designer cuts. People know it, it is a nice tender cut, doesn't do too much work, but it can have this silver skin that oh, runs yeah. through it and they kind of guide together. When you go to the grocery store and you see one of them this big, these two pieces are generally together, but the muscle fibers are going different ways. They should be separated. Right. They look at, you, yeah. you even said, they should be separated, it just looks that way. Yep. So what we do is we sell a sirloin filet, we peel off the bottom piece, we clean up a lot of that silver skin, and we end up with something like this, mm -hmm. which is gonna be um, a much better eating piece of meat, right. and it almost looks like a filet. Yeah, it really does, actually. Um, they're amazing. This is one of our best deals that I think we have, yeah. and it's a really, really great eat. Um, a lot of people don't like sirloin just because of the shape that yeah. it normally is. And, it's, and if it's a full one where it's actually two different ones. Yeah, it's, like, it just, it's, it's no good yeah. at that point. Um, so this is a really great filet alternative. It does have a little more chew to it. You can't stick your finger directly through it. But again, I like a little bit of bite, a little bit of chew. Sirloin filet is a great option. Last piece we have over here was the one that was kind of dangling off the yep. back that we had to peel down from the round to make sure we didn't cut it in half. This beautiful piece of meat is called the tri-tip. Pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, three tips. <laughs> three tips. So what we do is we clean it up. We try to leave as much fat on possible. Um, this is California barbecue. Yeah. So you go out west, you see this everywhere. You cross the Rockies, and then people can't find it anywhere. And yeah. they're like, well, what the hell happened? <laughs> um, unfortunately, a lot of this goes to ground beef right. when it's not out west. This piece, California barbecue is phenomenal, but when we say California barbecue, it's not low and slow, long yeah. smoke. It's more like a plancha, high heat, yeah. you can grill it, but again, you wanna keep it uh, medium rare, you wanna slice against the grain. See how we turned our knife, yep. pretend yep. knife, yep. because the grain is turning as well. So we're gonna go over. Fun fact, the reason why a lot of uh, traditional hardwood barbecue, it doesn't happen across the Rockies is because they don't have the hardwood that there is all over the Midwest and the South. Right. So, you know, the smoking traditions that you get really are about the region. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna pick up a lot of that stuff. That's why you get that mesquite down in Texas because that's where that wood grows. You know, that's why you're gonna get the cherry and the, um, the oak and the hickory and stuff like that closer to the, the coast and the, the South as well. Um, phenomenal cut, something we have, they're you get two per beef, yeah. so they sell out really fast, but loin section in a nutshell. Yeah, no, I think that was a great breakdown, and one of my favorites is the tri-tip, and this is another one that I didn't really know existed until about a couple years ago, and we made a video on my channel, because I was like, tri-tip, and then I looked it up, it's like, yeah, it's like, I think it's Santa Maria style barbecue, uh -huh. it's like super popular, you know, in California, but you don't really hear about it, like on the East Coast, so it's pretty interesting. It's crazy, yeah. But yeah, super interesting breakdown. Let's, uh, let's go to that last, uh, last section. One more piece. Yeah. Cool. All right, James, so we've got the final piece of me, finally. Finally. So let's, uh, let's walk through it. Okay, so this is the round. This is the fourth. We did the chuck, the rib, the loin. Now we're to the round. This is the leg yeah. part. Um, so here, 
It is a bunch of bigger roasts, bigger muscles, um, a hard working area, but spurts of energy. Yeah. So not all the time. So it's going to be generally leaner. This beef just happens to be beautifully marbled. Yeah. So you're gonna see marbling throughout, but generally this is gonna be a less marbled yep. cut. This is where you're gonna get your dry roasting items. It's where you're gonna get your roast beef cuts from. Um, but we'll actually start uh, where we left off at that sirloin end. Right. And basically what we do is that H bone, yep. half of it was left on this piece. So the other half of that H bone, there's this beautiful little fun cut. Yeah. Um, we're gonna launch it after the holidays. Yeah. But uh, this is called an oyster steak. Oh, interesting. Yep. Um, so this sits right inside of that H bone and that hip bone, and it's a beautiful little piece. It's got a little bit of chew to yeah. it. Uh, also known as a spider steak, because it kind of has the spider yeah, legs. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. Uh, that's a really fun one, unique. You don't see it very often, doesn't get harvested. Yeah. A lot of the times it's not worth the, the squeeze. Um, this right here is the bottom round. So this piece actually continues down and knife separation is the pecana. So it's okay. separated out, it's that same muscle. Bottom round is the most tender cut in the entire round section. It is delicious. We do this little unique roast where we just take the heart of the roast. Yep. It's actually about double this size, but we cut it down. Beautiful small roast and we'll tie it for the website. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and then we also will take the trimming parts and we'll cut these little things, run them through the tenderizer. Chicken fried steak. Chicken fried steak. Oh yeah. My man. Good stuff. Uh, we do all the hard work for you. All you have to do is bread it and fry yeah. it. Um, so I cut a little bit of those just so you could see them. Uh, on the other side of that, this big honking piece right here is called the top round. Yep. This is where you're gonna see a lot of your roast beefs. This is your traditional cut for it. It is a huge solid muscle. It is best served medium rare. Yeah. Uh, to slice rare, very thin. <laughs> slice paper thin. Yeah. Again, you can see those big right. muscle fibers throughout it. It is tightly compact, so it's going to have a chew. Yep. I don't know if you've ever had somebody make a roast beef yeah. and slice it too thick, and it's it's like bubble gum. Yeah. yeah. Don't want to do that. But cooked correctly, I like to do it like a high oven blast and then just turn off the oven yep. and then wait till it hits yep. temp. Slow cooking it, breaking down that connective tissue, but still keeping it nice and rare. Uh, this piece actually is the cap of okay. the top round. Yep. Cap of the top round is another cut that we're gonna launch later this year. Um, it is known as the Santa Fe steak. Okay. I believe. <laughs> I think it's the Santa Fe steak. But another flank alternative, you can kind of see yeah. the thick muscle fibers again. They're kind of shredding apart. Good for marination, slice it up. Delicious, delicious cut. Those all surround this piece right here. This is the femur bone. Yep. So this is this bone right here. Um, normally we'll take the bandsaw, zip, zip. These are great for your stocks. Lots of connective tissue, lots of collagen, which is gonna break down yep. into that gelatin. Just good for the gut and good for the soul. Uh, we'll take it. We do a canoe cut, which is a cross cut. Yeah. It is very dangerous. So we train our butchers. Um, that's why you don't see it a lot. Yeah. Just because it is a very difficult cut. You're putting your fingers dangerously close right, to that right. saw. Um, we do it for the love of y'all. Um, but we'll take it, we'll cut it down, cross cut, and then that's what you stick under your broiler. Right. And so really the fancy like bone marrow, like bone at, marrow. you know, at a yep. nice place yep. that'll like this, bring you out this boat of yeah, the, the boat marrow. Uh, one of my favorite places here in town, Lachlan Table, they take it, smoke it first, yeah. and then throw it under the broiler, oh. so you get that like smoky, yeah. and they serve it with pickled red onion and yeah. parsley salad. Phenomenal. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, you can also do rings to where you see those little boats. Yep. Those are traditionally cut out of the arm, which oh, it okay, has marrow yeah. in it as well, but it's not as big and prominent as this femur, mm. which is where you're gonna see those cross cuts. Also surrounding that, this piece right here, this is the knuckle or the sirloin tip. This generally goes to ground beef for us. Okay. It is a tougher piece of meat, obviously. Yeah, yeah. If you're using it all the time. Our animals are out on pasture. They're walking up and down hills. They're hanging out with their beef friends. They're doing fun things. They're playing games. So they're gonna run yeah, around. Yeah. They're using that muscle. Yeah. Right next to that is the eye of round. Eye of round is um, a little bit tougher than these two rounds yep. over here. Uh, what we do generally is cut a cross section, marinate it, make it into jerky. A lot of people do the long jerkies. Yep. That's where this comes from, the chewier style. 
whatever your preference is. You know, sure. it's whatever you're into. Yeah, That's, yeah. It's your style. Um, this, we sell every single one of them to our buddies down in Spotted Trotter in Atlanta. They cure it and then they make bristle out of it. Yeah. Phenomenal yeah. stuff. Um, so this piece connects to this piece over here. This is the hind shank. Again, you can see that yeah. all of that connective tissue, all of that action yep. going on. And then again, you have that marrow. marrow. We would cut it into smaller pieces. You would end up with your beef, beef asabuco. Yep. Delicious for the winter season, amazing braise. This piece right here, these are called Merlot steaks. Yeah. Um, they're, they're velvety. That's why they ended up naming yeah. them the Merlot steak. Yeah. Uh, very hard to harvest. You saw me whittling yeah, things out. Yeah, I saw you out. going in after them. I was like, I don't know what those things are. <laughs> and you didn't know if you were actually going to see anything, or yeah. I was just making ground beef. Yeah. Uh, but these things are phenomenal. We just launched these a few months ago. Uh, they're, in, they're tender, yep. but they're incredibly minerally and beefy. There's just so much great flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, phenomenal, phenomenal cut, but incredibly hard to harvest yeah. because it comes from the heel, which sits yeah. right here, and you literally have to search for it. Yeah, to I find... saw you like working <laughs> in there, and I was like, man, that's a, that's a tough little cut to get after. It is. There was there were six muscles around it, so you yeah. just take out that one centerpiece that kind of sits there, and you end up with these two beautiful cuts, high heat tear, keep rare, phenomenal, and delicious. Um, Unfortunately, you'll see a lot of this in the commodity world. Mm -hmm. They might pull this, they might pull this and this. Yeah. The rest of it goes to grind. Yeah. Yep. This is your lean ground beef. So whenever you see ground round, that's your like 90-10. Yep. That's the whole point of it. We like to appreciate everybody for who they are yep. and what they are special with. Um, so that's why we pull out all of these cuts and every single one of them is phenomenal in its own way. Yeah, no, and this was like super cool just to like slowly move down the animal and see all these pieces. Cause a lot of them have like very sim similar characteristics, but like, like you can totally see in these, like definitely leaner down here, where it's like up towards the front end, we were getting like those really nice brazing cuts and yep. all the differences between them. So super fascinating. Um, huge thank you for coming in and butchering this whole thing. I know it was a lot of work. So guys, like hopefully you guys learned something. Um, if you guys do want to pick up any of their pretty unique cuts. It's pretty, they actually have a really cool site with all this cool stuff. Um, a huge thank you to Porter Road. If you use my link down in the description, you'll get 15% off your order. Um, but yeah, guys, that was awesome. I appreciate it, James. Not a problem. I would give you a hand, but we're gonna, we're gonna go through we're gonna the do meat it hand anyways. anyway. We've done it earlier. <laughs> all right, thanks guys. Thank you.